What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Today we'll be working on the Lexus GX470. I do have some sad news or bad news or however you want to take it. The um, LX470 is gone. I recently sold the Lexus LX470. It's been about a week and a half since she's been gone. Got mixed emotions about it. I talked about it briefly in the previous video, but I wanted to make the previous video more focused around the off-roading activities that we were doing out at Bundy Hill. So after I sold the LX470, my brother stumbled upon that beautiful 4Runner that you guys saw in the previous video, and I could probably put a picture of it right here. In a way, it kind of worked out because as soon as the funds became available from the LX470, the 4Runner showed up and it was like, in a way it was kind of like a sign or like it meant, it was meant to be. So we picked that up and after we picked up the 4Runner, uh, my brother decided that he doesn't want the GX470 anymore because obviously he's got too many vehicles and i probably shouldn't be picking up any more vehicles but anyways i basically inherited the gx470 from him got it super cheap and i figured to myself you know it's it's pretty cheap uh it's a lot more cheap to modify a gx470 versus an lx470 or a l100 series truck or any of those l series uh land cruisers uh those can it can get a little pricey as far as modifications go and you know for something that i'm going to take out off-roading and possibly cut into and whatnot i would prefer for it to be a bit on the budget side or budget friendly side so let's get down and dirty with what's happening today let's talk a little bit about the gx470 and what we've done with it recently or i guess what my brother's done with it recently he's done a few things to it and he's not as into youtube as i am so a lot of the installs that he did just kind of happened in the background so Let's go ahead, flip this camera, and focus on the GX470. Here he wants me to throw his wrecked Frisbee. Dozer, what did you do with it? Any toy that I get for him, he just, you know, demolishes. We can go ahead and throw this for him. Doze, can you sit? Can you speak? Speak! Come on, buddy. Speak! Speak! He can do it. He's just too excited. Speak! Come on. Speak! Good boy! We'll go ahead and toss this. All right, and into the darkness he goes. Hopefully he comes back. Just kidding, he'll come there back. There he is, brought it back. I just get a little weary of this guy because uh, if he sees a critter, he'll go running after it. You know, rabbits are probably his favorite, but he'll go after groundhogs or, you know, anything small that runs away from him. Anyways, the GX470. If you haven't watched the previous videos of us, I don't know, picking it up or, you know, when I installed the wheels and tires on it, this is a 2003 Lexus GX470. It's got the 4.7 liter V8. So far what my brother's done to it, it has the old man emu. It's a two inch lift on the front, but it looks a little higher than that because the spring that he, or the coil, I guess, that goes around the shock on the front end uh, is the heavy duty spring that's meant for if you wanted to put like a winch or a steel bumper on the front, which, you know, hopefully I plan on doing here in the future. TRD wheels, they're replicas off of eBay. Uh, the tires are a, oh, what is this? A 255-7517. They're basically a takeoff from a Rubicon Wrangler. Now, as far as the back goes, we've got the, I forget what the name is. I think it's like Strutland or something like that. It's the, the red springs. It's basically the airbag delete. So these come with factory airbag system in the back. Uh, that's been deleted. Put those red springs in it does have rough country shocks that are meant for like a three to five inch uh lift and i know some of you guys are like oh you know why'd you why'd you put all these random parts on it well the front end kit my brother got super cheap off of marketplace the rough country shocks are like 100 bucks why not and like i said you know this is something that's you know i'm trying to create a little budget build out of it other modifications all right so we are still working on the seats. The back seats have been replaced with uh, newer GX470 seats. And I believe I cover a little bit about the whole seating thing in a different video. I think it's the uh, the video when I was doing the LX470 wheels. And I could probably put a link in the description down below. We've got this fancy Tesla looking screen here. I think it's uh, the Phoenix brand, if uh, I can recall. That uh, That door, I'm kind of going through a hard time with. The rail on that side, 
the the rail that the um it's like the guide for the window as it slides down for some reason that guide right there broke uh from the the welds down there and the rail kind of came off and it got all messed up in there and it eventually fell out believe it or not now, and i've got the rail here in the back somewhere so i can't the window will roll down but the minute i roll it down it basically comes out of its like rubber gasket guide and and the only way to fix it is pretty much to get a new door because the rail is pretty much embedded into the the metal section of this car and i'm not like a pro welder or something but i, I i've got something in my in my mind that i might try and uh when we get to it i'll make a video of it hopefully if that's successful i do have tint for the front windows that i just ordered and they are in a box in the front of the house so i gotta get those installed at some point but the reason i've got the gx 470 in between the lift is because so the main reason for this video i guess it'll be kind of like two birds with one stone show you guys operation of the tire machine uh, the tire machine videos are kind of a hit lately. I don't know why. Well, I guess if you want to learn how to mount tires, go ahead. Anyways, I just picked these up off a of marketplace, and you're probably giving me crap for why are you buying used tires? Well, I got them for like 150 bucks. Why not? And the date of production on these are still within three years. It's recommended that you don't buy tires older than three years old. Uh, and for 150 bucks to pretty much... Uh, be able to buy tires and trial and error especially like fitment stuff and i'm fortunate enough to have my own tire machine and balancer so why not you know if you're in a situation where you have access to a tire machine and balancer or you know you got one of your friends who can mount you know stuff for you for the cheap why not you know 150 bucks versus these are probably like 1100 or 1200 dollars brand new you know including installation so let's go ahead get these installed these are a two 85 i should know this by heart these are a 285 70 17 this is about as close to a 33 inch tire uh as we can get for the price so they're falcon wild peaks so there's a decent tread left on them main purpose is to check out sizing and see how it looks on it and you know maybe in the future i might go up to 33s or 35s or something we'll see and if you new balance wearing corvette guys are watching you guys are probably upset about the mess We'll go ahead and clean up a little bit just so we can use the tire machine and then uh let's get to work we got the gx 470 up in the air there is one point that i kind of want to cover and you know hopefully this is helpful information to you if you've got a lift or access to a lift and you plan on putting your gx 470 on it uh i know it'd be helpful information to me if i was doing this for the first time but that is uh you know your jacking points when getting these cars up on the on the lift uh, with my setup the way i have my arms i've got the shorter arms on the front right here and then the longer arms in the back uh on the front i've got it right there that's my jacking point for the front of the vehicle and then on the rears i've got them to this uh mount right here that supports the i believe this is called the trailing arm that goes to the rear the rear differential or the rear axle is probably the right term so got it right there you know i don't complain about the short wheelbase just because these things are awesome off-road and the short wheelbase probably helps a little bit but um when it comes to jacking these things up it's kind of awkward and this is how i've you know been able to make it work if you have any recommendations please feel free to comment down below and let me know It'd be great hopefully this information kind of helps you so let's go ahead get some air out of these tires and then uh, get to mounting these all right guys so we are down to the last wheel right here i figured for the last wheel i guess i'll kind of show you guys how i go about replacing it just wanted to show you the difference between the 285 and the 255 now my brother was giving me crap saying oh there isn't going to be that much of a difference but i don't know you guys tell me i feel like there's a pretty noticeable difference i mean just that stance right there uh that's going to be a wider stance compared to the 255 and then if we look at the size of the overall tire Let's see if I can kind of sneak back here. You can see that the uh, 285 70 17 versus the 255 75, I believe. This one is a yeah, 255 75. So just to give you guys uh, a difference here, just to gauge a difference. So that's what they look like. All right, guys. So the first thing you guys want to do is get the, the little valve core right here out of the uh, valve stem. I think I got that right. So to do that, you need a little valve core removal tool. Just goes inside the valve stem, you grab onto it. It's got these little teeth. 
grab onto the valve core, and then you spin it out, and it'll come out along with a whole bunch of air. So that's kind of like the first thing we did. Oh, here goes my uh, wheel. All right. Now, for some reason, on these TRD wheels, it is a very tight fit on the uh, back sidewall right here. So I'm going to kind of go around, and as I'm uh, peeling back the sidewall or breaking the bead, I'm going to go ahead and spray some sort of um, lubricant. In my case, I've got quick detailer because I'm too lazy to go all the way inside the house and grab some soapy solution. So it'll work for now. Yes, it's a really tight fit on the back for some reason. So I'm just gonna provide some lubrication here. And then I'm just gonna kind of go slowly around and peel it back. All right, so the reason I'm giving it lubrication as I'm going around is because when I go to put the wheel on the uh, turntable right here, I don't want the sidewall to float back down and it'll be really difficult and I'll have to like deadlift the tire off of the uh, off of this side. So let's go ahead and break the bead on the other side. So right now this is the front face shell of the wheel. This is fairly easy. I think two pry bikes on this side and you should be good to go. Heck, I think we're already good to go. All right. All right, bring this up here. Get the jaws to grab onto it. All right. Now that we have the wheel on the turntable, we're gonna pretend that this car has TPMS. Uh, this O3 GX470 doesn't have TPMS. So just for the sake of demonstration, we're gonna treat it as if it had TPMS. All right, and uh, TPMS is a tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, you would see this like, a uh, huge, uh, let's see, let's bring this back over here. You'll see a device similar to that, kind of mounted right behind the valve stem. And um, these tend to pry off or break whenever uh, tire technicians are taking off or putting on a tire and not knowing about it. So we're gonna treat it as if there was a TPMS sensor. All right, just for the sake of demonstration. If there was no TPMS sensor, you could uh, just, you know, go ahead and take the tire off. All right, so first thing we wanna do is grab our pry bar. We're gonna grab on the, on the, we're gonna grab on the edge of the sidewall here and we're gonna kind of bring it up. And if you need some uh, leverage, you can push on this side down. And what that does is you're pushing this down to the lower part of the wheel here. And basically the upper part is a, Larger diameter, lower part is a smaller diameter. So when you bring the sidewall down, there's a, like a pocket that the sidewall can float into. That way you get more space on this side. So because we have a huge sidewall here, we've got enough play. So it's pretty easy to get this sidewall pried over the duck bill. So once that's pried over, we're gonna go ahead and spin it clockwise. And get rid of that, set this aside for now. All right. Oh, and by the way, the TPMS sensor, we started it from there and we're going to start it again from here as well when we're taking the tire off. All right, so the reason for why I did that lubrication is because the tire tends to uh, seat back down on that side and then it's kind of hard and you gotta sit there working with friction. But now that there's lubrication on the wheel, I should be able to pry this up fairly easily. So what we're gonna do is we're going to sneak this in here, right? And then this is usually a better job with two people. You could do it with one person. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the tire. We're gonna pry on the lower sidewall, kind of what we did with the upper sidewall. We're gonna get part of the sidewall over the duckbill, and as soon as we get part of the tire over the duckbill, go ahead and spin it, and it'll pry it right off. All right, it's really not that bad, guys. So here is our new tire. So some things that you want to check for, all right? With the new tire, you want to make sure if it's directional, you want to make sure that the size of this inner diameter matches your wheel. I've had somebody bring a Tahoe to me. Um, oh God, the way I learned that lesson. 
Somebody brought a Tahoe to me, said he bought all four brand new tires, right? I took off all the tires from his wheels. And when I was getting ready to mount the first tire, turns out he had 18s and he ordered 16s. So lesson learned, always check the inner diameter of the tire before you start working on tires. Uh, make sure it's if it's directional, like if it's uh, going, if, if it's supposed to go this way or that way, make sure you keep in mind which side the, 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 the wheel tire combo is going to go on the vehicle and whatnot. You don't want to mount all, you know, the same direction for both sides. Yeah, if that makes sense. You'll, you'll get what I mean. Anyways, if I have to explain that to you, I don't think you should be doing tires. The next point that I want to bring up, you'll probably see a red dot or a yellow dot on the, on the sidewall of the tire. And that basically indicates the, I believe it is the high point or the low point. I can't remember. But what you want to do is you want to mount the valve stem as close as possible to that red dot. Or if you have a yellow dot, as close as possible to the yellow dot. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So it's, it's either with the valve stem or against the valve stem or on the opposite side of the valve stem if it's red and then the yellow takes precedence and the yellow will go with the valve stem. But just keep in mind that's what the dots are for on the tires. All right, and one last thing to check for is if the sidewall, you'll see it'll say inner, it'll say inside or outside. So sometimes uh, some tires uh, will have a sidewall that's dedicated to go towards the inside of the car and a sidewall that's going towards the outside of the vehicle and that it's, it's not just because of you know, the way the sidewall is created, it's uh, probably due to the tread pattern on the tire. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and mount it this way. So let's, um, let's go ahead and get some uh, tire lube on here. So get some lubrication there. And you can find this at your local automotive store, the tire lube, or you could use dish soap and water, but uh, I did that when I started working on tires and uh, just, Save yourself the hassle and get yourself some tire lube. And then there's also a tire lube applicator. There's a tire lube applicator that you can also purchase from the automotive store. Okay, now that I'm ready to mount the tire to the wheel, I'm gonna like again. I'm gonna treat this as if it had a TPMS sensor. We're gonna keep the TPMS sensor at our that's like the eight or nine o'clock position. Uh, if you're looking at it, so I'm gonna go ahead. Where's that red dot? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this on here like that. Give it some space to get the, uh, the duck bill over. All right, and then this part is fairly easy. What you're gonna do is just kind of like hold down on it and let the, the duck bill kind of do its job. And it, it'll basically just pry itself in. All right, so now to get the second sidewall on, Remember, we've got our TPMS sensor at our like eight-ish, nine-ish uh, clock position. Then we're gonna get our red dot as close as possible to the, the valve stem. And what you wanna do is, we wanna get the tire, so this side of the tire is gonna go above the ductile, like the, the back piece of this ductile, it's gonna go above it. And this, the front part of this is gonna go underneath this ductile. So it's, it's going underneath and let's see if I can, Get you guys uh, closer, just to give you guys an idea of what that looks like. As we're gonna spin, so we're gonna spin clockwise, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down on this side, right? And what that's gonna do is, remember how I said there's, the lower diameter is smaller than the upper diameter? So we're, we've got that pocket that we can kinda give ourselves some slack on. So by, the, by pushing in, so by pushing in the sidewall into the lower pocket, we're giving ourselves some leeway on the other side. So that way when we were prying, this side on uh, we're not holding so tight and tearing up the the, um, the edge over here all right so hold on on this side and then just spin it and then you see as we get over here how it's 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 hugging the wheel and we need some more uh, some more um, play on this side so this is what's this is what we're doing for the uh, the sidewall there we go and it's on now, this tire machine does have a bead blaster, however, uh, the way the design, the design of this wheel, let's see if you guys can see, uh, if you look at the valve stem right here, where it's popping out from, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and plug the air over here, and what happens when I fill up the air is it's not really going inside the tire, it's basically coming to the outside, so this might be a little loud. You can see it's just coming out this way.
right? I mean, you could try holding up on it. It won't really work. And uh, the bead blaster, I haven't been able to get, you know, I wasn't lucky with it. And the first time I did this, when I did the, the previous tires, I actually had to use the, the starter fluid method. But today I discovered you don't even need to do all that. All you gotta do, take the wheel off, right? So now that the wheel and tire combo is on the ground, you'll notice right here, just if you look right there, you can see that the valve stem basically snuck its way into the tire. So now when we press on the air and like with my hand over here, I'm kind of holding it down. That way we can kind of create like a seal. That way air doesn't escape. So as you kind of like hold on to it and then fill it up with air. Probably do this with two hands. There we go. Took a little bit of playing around, but we managed to get uh, a seal. All right. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up to about 40 PSI. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, wash the, the inner sidewalls or the inner wheel because it's still covered in mud from when we went off-roading over the weekend. And then we'll get it on the balancer. All right, guys, now that we are up to 40 PSI and you might hear some loud pops just because the sidewall is, you know, sealing its speed up against the wheel. So don't let that frighten you and don't leave your fingers anywhere near that area where it's about to pop. Uh, well, not explode, but like pop, seal, closed. You know what I mean? Anyways, we've got our valve core here and our valve core, valve core removal tool. We're going to go ahead, uh, get them together and I'll hold it with one finger like that. And we're going to let some air escape. All right. And then just righty tidy. Close it up. Grab a cap. All right. Now let's go ahead and wash these wheels so that we can balance them. So it is time to balance. Excuse the mess as always. Oh, oh, we don't need that. I'll cycle that at some point. But anyways, we've got the balancer turned on. I just had some wheel weights come in the mail. Purchased these off of Amazon. I'll go ahead and insert a link in the description down below to everything I'm using today, if you would like. The Mayflower wheel balancer, just a side note, it does not come with this large cone. I'll go ahead and insert a link in the description down below for this large cone as well. This has come in super handy for me for like large truck tires basically, or I mean wheels. So wheels with the super large diameter on the inside, the large cone has come in super handy. And uh, it took me a couple tries of trying to figure out which cone it was. Like I had a couple orders and that I had to return, but I finally found the one I needed. And um, I'll go ahead and insert that link in the description down below. So if you're somebody who's watching this just for the sake of the wheel and tire machine uh, or wheel balancer and tire machine, uh, then uh, hopefully this helps you out. But if you're somebody watching for the sake of the GX470, uh, thank you for watching. The, I went ahead and got the wheel mounted on the balancer, like yay. Got the, this this part right here comes with the, uh, the balancer, you just spin it on. And then to take it off, you know, you spin it off or there's a quick release right here. I've got a separate video on how I use the wheel balancer and whatnot. But uh, for this, let's go ahead and Got it turned on. First thing we want to do is take our little measurement device right here. And if you look over there, it looks like it's 75, 70. Let's see. You want to put this on the, on the lip right there like that. All right. So that is about 75, 76, 77, 78. Let's call it 78. So over here where it says distance to the wheel, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 70. Eight. All right, and now we need the the width of the wheel. So we're gonna take our caliper right here. I already know the measurement, but we're gonna set uh, 
one on this side right here and then one on this outer lip right here just the the, the fascia and take that measurement it is 10 so we're gonna go ahead and set that to 10 and then the diameter of the wheel is a 17 so let's go ahead and set this to 17 and then I personally like to use this setting and I have a video where I go over the settings and whatnot and uh, uh, yeah you can just watch that all right and then I prefer to use ounces as my unit go ahead and start it yeah you want to probably stand away from it especially if it's like wet and got a whole bunch of debris on it all right so that's calling for a good amount of weight 3.75 ounces so let's see so in this box we've got the one ounces so what i'm going to do is grab one two three and then we'll cut one off you can just cut it by hand or use a blade so we've got three ounces right there and then we need the 0.75 now you could get these in different increments you could get them in uh, quarter ounce half ounce full ounce uh, actually let's not open this one yet this one is what are these these are the half ounces all right so I have some half ounces right here so we're gonna take one of these just cut it off by hand set that aside there and then to make that 0.75 we'll add a one quarter so that is 3.5 one quarter makes 3.75 ounces all right and the way this works i said i wasn't going to go into detail but it looks like i'm doing it anyways i've got another video where i kind of go over the wheel bouncer all right so once we hit that line now this machine doesn't have a fancy laser usually some fancy machines like a snap-on machine or something will have a fancy laser that kind of guides you where to put it so now that we're at the center, what we want to do is the top center right here of the wheel. Um, that is where we're going to put the weights. So one way that I like to do this is, you know, this will be right there. Kind of put my finger on it as an indicator. And then as I come all the way around, usually what I like to do is like make a little mark kind of thing. All right. And... Over here is where I'm going to put my 3.75 ounces. All right, so I've got my 3.75 ounces on there. And uh, just a side note, if you've got a tire that's like greasy or, you know, sticky weights might not be the best option for you. I prefer sticky weights. I like the sticky weights. Another thing that I like to keep on handy sometimes is some uh, brake clean. So what this will do, will will get rid of whatever grease is on there so that the sticky weights can actually stick. And... Uh, if you're somebody who's taking your wheels and tires to a tire machine and or to a tire guy and they're super dirty on the inside if you really want to piss them off go ahead and do that but yeah let's go ahead and finish this up i give it a little rolling start start it again hopefully that increment should be lower than last time All right, so it's calling for one ounce. So that is a good sign. So we'll spin this till it reaches, oh, I missed it by a hair, right there. So right here, we'll put our indicator right there. That's the top center, hold on to it. All right, so it looks like I need to put a one ounce right in front of those. All right, cool. That's what you want to see. You want to see all zeros. So we have balanced this wheel. Let's go ahead and uh, get this off and get the other ones balanced. Here is the end result. Gosh, I am tired. That took a lot of energy out of me. We've got the truck sitting like a monster truck now. What do you think, bro? Dang. He's the one that had doubts in the, uh, the bigger tires. He was saying, oh, they're going to be the same thing. I don't know. And I'll see night and day. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe that little bit. That looks great. But if you look at the truck, you will notice that uh, we've got a little bit of what is it, negative camber or is that positive camber? But um, it's kind of where the wheels are 
kind of doing these. Caster. I'm, caster. Oh, caster. My bad. But uh, part of it is because I just brought it down from the hoist. And another part is I need to upgrade my control arms. Right now, we're still rocking the stock control arms. I've been looking up the control arms for the past couple days. So if you have suggestions, drop them down below. I kind of want to go budget build with this. But um, when it comes to control arms, I think I should splurge a little bit. Right, bro? Yeah, especially on these. Uh, so really the big names, there's the SPC upper control arms. But, I mean, we can go the cheap route. And uh, We did find somebody on Marketplace that has... It's the, um, some Icon Deltas. Icon Deltas, but yeah, so, they're, they're for Tacomas, right? But they should be the same thing. Yeah, no, it'll, it should run. Yeah, so I might hit him up. The only reason I haven't hit him up yet is because I've been so busy with work. And he's about a three-hour drive up north. Might right. give us an excuse to hit up some trails up north. There we go. So, I'm down for a road trip. Uh, maybe. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, questions, comments, remarks, drop them down below. But for now, I'm going to call it a night. Are you going to call it a night? I'm going to call it a night. All right, we're going to call it a night. And we'll see you guys in the next video.